So after the disappointing trauma, would Dario Argento bounce back to form with his next film, The Stendhal Syndrome? I can answer that question with a resounding no. So this is my 12th Dario Argento film. There will be spoilers today. Believe me, I've no interest in protecting you from knowing what happens in this. In fact, I might just make it my mission to deliberately spoil this film for you so you don't feel compelled to watch it. I might even put spoilers in my thumbnail for this one. I might even change my YouTube name to spoilers from this film. No, I'm not going to go that far. So in this story, we have a young female cop who looks about 12. Seriously, we'll come back to that. She's on the tail of a murderer slash rapist called Alfredo, who is running amok all over Italy. Kindergarten cop, as I'm going to call her. She catches up to him, but he turns the tables on her, rapes her. She gets away, and then a little while later, he catches her again, rapes her again. Yeah, it's a really nice film, this. Then she seems to kill him, but does she? So the film kind of enters a second phase at this point where... We're not sure if Alfredo is going to turn up again, possibly for another rape, or is it another killer who's taken up the mantle for the final act? Let's just talk about the rapes first and foremost, because I want to get that stuff out of the way before we move on with the rest of the review. I'm not the biggest fan of rape in movies. I mean, I, I don't mind it if it serves the story. And even if it doesn't, as long as it's kept short and sweet, sweet is not the right word. As long as it's kept reasonably short, I, I don't mind, you know. But in this film, the rape scenes really drag on. The camera gets right up in the victim's face and the assailant's face. It's the, the tone of it is really depraved. It's hard to think of truly great horror films that have rape scenes. I guess one of them would be The Evil Dead. Where there's a girl in that who gets raped by a tree, but that doesn't feel the same. It's so kind of surreal and otherworldly. It's hard for me anyway to get offended by that. Rob Zombie's Halloween comes to mind. Now, there's a rape scene in that film that has pissed off a lot of Halloween fans. That particular scene has never bothered me because it's so quick. It doesn't really dwell on it for that long. What you see in the Stendhal Syndrome is, is up another level from Rob Zombie's Halloween. We, we don't just get one rape scene, we get two, and they are both pretty brutal to sit through. Not quite in the league of I spit on your grave, say, but it, it's getting there. And I just didn't enjoy these scenes at all. Get to the second one, and I'm just kind of like, man, this is really tiresome to sit through. We do get a pretty cool scene where kindergarten cop turns the tables and finally kills Alfredo. But I didn't even enjoy that scene at the time it was happening because there was still 45 minutes to go at this point. So I wasn't actually convinced that Alfredo was dying here. And when I saw him getting dragged towards the waterfall, I thought to myself, oh yeah, this'll, this'll be the get out clause. You know, he'll float away downstream and then he'll heal himself like Michael Myers in Halloween 5 and then he'll come back for the finale. Now, if I watched the Stendhal Syndrome again, I would probably really enjoy Alfredo's death in the proper way, but I'm never gonna watch this film again, so it's completely immaterial. Another important facet of this film is the so-called Stendhal Syndrome itself. This is a real-life condition, actually, where people, if they see lots of works of art, lots of paintings, they can get really overwhelmed, get dizzy and just faint. It's a very rare condition, but it is real, I believe. Kindergarten Cop suffers from it in this film, and it does sort of play into the story a bit, I guess. But beyond my initial intrigue, I didn't find it that compelling a plot point. Mostly all it does is give Argento an excuse to do lots of fantasy dreamlike sequences where kindergarten cop is going in and out of picture frames and stuff. Also, for 1996, the special effects are okay, but the trouble is back then effects were nothing like they are now. You know, if this film had been made in 2022 with a decent budget behind it. I think these fantasy dreamlike sequences could have been something, but as it is, the special effects at times in this film do look quite ropey. I do have one positive for the film, which is the music. Now, I kind of feel like since Phenomena, the music in these Argento films has, has been slowly declining, a bit like the films themselves, but in this film, we finally get a really nice, eerie tune, which I, I guess would be the main theme. You can tell that Argento didn't have that much good music to draw upon for this because this one tune really is overplayed. It's, it, it's constant throughout the film. 
but at least it's good, you know. If I ever listen to a full album of music taken entirely from Argento films, I like to think that this tune from the Stendhal Syndrome would make it onto the track list, if only for a minute or two. So there we go, I've said something good about this film, and that did hurt my feelings, it has to be said. Kindergarten Cop is played by Asia Argento, and she is woefully, woefully miscast in this. I think she was about 20 when she made this. She's meant to be playing someone who's like, possibly north of 30. I mean, it's not like they've even made this cop a, a rookie, you know. This is a seasoned detective, this character. They might as well have given her Columbo's white overcoat because she's out in the field doing her own thing. But, you know, she'll bring back results. She always does. She's a well-respected member of the force. That's the type of character that we have here. Argento seems to realise he has a problem because halfway through the film, he has the character cut her own hair. She gives herself a more manly, flat kind of hairstyle. But this just makes it even more obvious that Asia Argento is really young, in my opinion. She didn't even look 20 when she was 20. And even if you can ignore the fact that Asia is way too young for this part, there are times during the film where you're just reminded of the fact. You know, there's a scene where the chief of police gives her her handgun back, but the way she just takes it in her hands, it looks like what it would look like if a child was handed a gun. There's another scene where the kindergarten cop has to go into a boardroom full of other cops for some kind of meeting. It's not a scene that lasts long, but in those brief few seconds that it, that it is on the screen, I'm just reminded of the, the TV show Gotham, where young Bruce Wayne, when he's about 10, goes to Wayne Enterprises and sits in a board meeting with like a bunch of adults. I get that Asia Argento is Dario's daughter. He wanted to do her a solid by putting her in a lot of these movies in starring roles, but I mean, come on, this, was, this one was totally not for her. She, he'd already given her trauma. Why would he need to put her in this film when she was totally not suited to being in it? And it's not like I even like the character. Even if this character had been played by an actress of an appropriate age, I still probably wouldn't have been on her side in this film because she's really annoying. She's miserable. She, she just goes weird in the second half of the film. So I, I did say there would be spoilers earlier. So it turns out that Kindergarten Cop becomes a killer herself in the second half of this, but I, I didn't care. I mean, it's not like you can't pull off a character like this. One of my favourite horror films in the past couple of years was Saint Maud, a, a character who goes really weird and murderous, but right to the very end of that film, I was still on her side. The same is not the case for Kindergarten Cop in Stendhal Syndrome. She's just so annoying to follow in this. The way that she just becomes a real oddball with her psychologist, the way she treats her colleagues, I, I just found myself not caring. The, her, her opposite in this, uh, Alfredo, equally bad. He's played by uh, an actor called Thomas Kretschmann. I might have his surname wrong, but he went on to be in Resident Evil Apocalypse and one of the Avengers films. He did all right for himself, given the fact that one of his early credits was this, but he's such a generic, dull, and obviously vile villain. I mean, there's no interesting character traits that he has. Come on, Dario, make an effort. The other characters beneath the main two are mostly just wafer-thin, throwaway. There's this one young cop who has a big crush on kindergarten cop, he goes around to her apartment at one point and she does this sex act with him where she's really dominant over him. It's just really awkward and uncomfortable. I don't know what you were smoking when you made this scene, Dario. There's another character who's like a female prostitute. At one point, Alfredo picks her up and takes her to an abandoned building or rather she takes him to an abandoned building. But the curious thing about this scene is the fact that Alfredo doesn't speak the whole time. I think it's a case of preserving the mystery of whether it is Alfredo with this woman, but the scene just doesn't work. It's just weird having one character talk a lot and the other character say nothing. You know, women generally don't wander off into the blue with men who can't speak. You know, that would be a sign that they're probably a serial killer slash rapist. But yeah, I'm pretty much done talking about the Stendhal syndrome at this point. I'm not a fan of this at all. 
Thankfully, I didn't buy it on Blu-ray. This is available for free on Shudder currently. It's been there a while, I think. Probably Dario doesn't actually charge Shudder for this film. He just lets them have it permanently for nothing. I have had to spend some money on the next film, The Phantom of the Opera. It's not available to rent in the UK, that film. So I've had to buy a cheap DVD for like £10. I can see on the cover art that Asia Argento is in this one as well, probably playing a 55-year-old opera conductor with a drink problem. Seriously though, if she's playing the Phantom in that film, I am, I'm going to find it very hard to get through that, but that, that's for another day. For now, let's get to the Bag of Terror and find out what score I'm going to give the Stendhal Syndrome. There might not be anything in this bag, let's see. Oh, we got something. For the music. <laughs> 